Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Udo Sendaidukai and in this video I show you how you create the perfect crossfades for your loops. Since I put a lot of work and knowledge into my videos and make them freely available, I would be very happy if you leave me a like and subscribe to the channel. And the best of you, share this video. But let's get started. So sometimes you want to record, say, a pad with an effect like a reverb as audio and then loop the sample. Or sometimes it's enough if, you, uh, if notes have a longer release and uh, merge into each other. Then you have the problem that at the start of the recording there is no effect or reverb or release of the previous notes that can be heard because, because that, is, uh, that is naturally not available at the start of a sound. And if you loop that sample like this, there's a very ugly transition from a sound with reverb or release suddenly to a sound without reverb or release. Here's an example um, um, without a crossfade. And here's an example. Um, with a crossfade. Okay, so there are two very simple solutions for such a case. Actually, it's only one, but Bitwig um, offers a nice feature that makes it much simpler. The first solution in Bitwig internally is if you record a melody, for example, with a synthesizer. I take here, for example, um, um, polysynth. Come on. Like this. And um, uh, delay plus. And um, of course you can do this uh, with a pet as well or melody or whatever you want to record. So you start playing the MIDI notes in either the arranger or the clip launcher. I have some MIDI notes over here and can put it in the um, clip launcher over here or in the arranger. That's completely free where you record this. But when this is done, the clip must be in the clip launcher in the second step. There, you select bounce in place with the right mouse click, like this is German, so I can switch that in English so you can read it properly. So bounce in place and Bitwig will create a double length audio clip. So you have here, for example, the four uh, length loop and here you have an audio file that shows four bars and the loop but at the end it stops at nine so it's eight bars loop long uh, eight bars long so um, the audio clip itself starts with a clean um, sound and the reverb and the release is slowly added and then transitions into an extended clip which already starts with a mixed in reverb and the release sound over here. When the clip now loops, it loops along with the reverb and the release. Let me show this. So again, the sound starts clean at the initial start and then loops, uh, then loops mixed into a reverb and release sound. If you now um, track the clip back into the arranger, there's still the MIDI clip, let's delete that and put it here in the arranger. 
you will have uh, a twice as long clip available. So the eight bar, um, eight bar clip is in the arrange, uh, arranger visible. So now you can select the second part with the time selection tool over here. So the, these are the first four bars and you take the second bars mark them and select control e split now you have the go back with with one or on the pointer tool you have the clean beginning and you have a four bar clip uh, that you can loop very cleanly so you have always the nice loop over here so I would like to remind you, um, please leave me a like and subscribe to the channel to support me. Okay, the second solution is exactly the same principle, only manually. So let me deactivate that. And um, if you have an external synthesizer that has a nice reverb and you want to loop that, um, I now simulate this with the Search XT synthesizer, its own reverb and uh, these notes again. I record the audio signal into another audio track. You see here, this is the input of this channel. You can of course also play it live or play the MIDI notes from your external synth first, then correct them and finally feed them back into the synth so you can then deliver the sound without playing mistakes in your record track. The trick is to play the melody or the part you want to record twice in a row. So let me uh, show that. Just start this, then arm um, this audio track and now hit record. Second time. Then I stop the MIDI clip and then I stop the audio clip. Okay. And I stop the whole transport. So now you have uh, the, the audio clip available and you see it's um, again longer than four bars and you see the the let me take this over here for example then you have again the first uh, four bars are clean and i now have the second bars second four bars with the perfect loop so i put the loop over here start over here and the end at the end of the four bar loop and move the play cursor over here in the beginning. So when I start this sample right now, it starts with a clean sound and goes over to the loop sound. So there you see, and there's another little addition for this perfect, uh, for such a perfect recording. If you record the loop three times and let the end fade out or two times with a fade out like I did over here, um, you can, uh, you have then a clean beginning, the first, the first um, um, four bars. I press now control E to select that. Then the second um, part with the perfect loop, control E, and the last part with a fade out. So you always have a nice fade out if you want to end the loops, for example. With this technique, you should be um, perfect prepared for your future loops. So if you like to keep seeing videos like this, uh, give me a like and subscribe to the channel. If you find the video helpful, like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Um, my name is Odo Zendaidokai. Thanks for watching and paying attention. And if you have any other questions or feedback, just let me know in the comments.
I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, take care. See you then. Ciao, ciao.